Hey everybody, it's Lo and welcome back to my channel, Lo Without Limits. In this video, I'm going to share five beauty and body products that you need to switch to non-toxic alternatives and why. So if you want to see that, then just keep watching. These five products are things that we use every day and that we put directly on our body and our skin is our biggest organ. So a lot of the stuff that we put on our skin does get absorbed, goes directly into the bloodstream. And if you're putting things that are toxic and filled with nasty chemicals, all of that is getting into your bloodstream and can affect your health in the long run, especially as certain things start to bioaccumulate and can lead to a bunch of different health issues. But thankfully, there are a bunch of different non-toxic swaps to everything nowadays. So I'm going to share with you what those are and why you should switch them out. When looking into getting new things for either body care, skin care, makeup, or even stuff for the home, I like looking at Think Dirty and Healthy Living apps. For both of those, you can either search a broad category like sunscreen and it will give you a whole list of different ones with the best ones on the top that you can look at and choose from and then down the list they will have worse ratings so the higher the rating the worse it is or you can put in a specific product that you know you have or a specific brand or even scan the barcode of a product when you're at the store and you want to open up the app and check before you buy and it will show you all of the ingredients that are in there and then each ingredient will also have a rating so if all of the ingredients have a rating of one and two the product will have a better rating as well but if there's something in there with a rating of nine and it will explain why what that ingredient is used for and then it will take all of that information and give the product an overall rating so i really like looking at that when looking into new products first up one of the most important swaps to make for your health especially going into the summer is sunscreen so most standard sunscreens are chemical based and they utilize oxybenzone and oxin oxytonate in order to block the uva and uvb rays and they've been found to be endocrine disruptors by being absorbed into the skin and these chemicals not only are super toxic for our bodies but they're also really harmful to coral reefs and marine life to where in Hawaii they've banned sunscreens that have those products in there in order to protect their marine ecosystem and all of the ocean life around it. When switching to a clean non-toxic sunscreen you can stick with chemical sunscreens or you can use physical sunscreens. Chemical sunscreens as long as it doesn't have those oxybenzone or oxytonate in it then they will be good so for example this is still a chemical based sunscreen it has avobenzone in it as the sunscreen that will protect you from the uva and uvb rays but in studies it has a better rating on the ewg and it isn't toxic to our bodies and it doesn't harm the ocean life as well so some people still do like chemical sunscreens because they're a bit thinner and easier to apply physical sunscreens have a mineral based active ingredient such as zinc oxide or titanium oxide or even both and those sit on top of the skin and basically reflect the uva and uvb rays back so they don't get absorbed by your skin but they also are a little bit thicker every once in a while so sunscreens that i like to use that are non-toxic are alba botanica this is just a really good brand and a lot of their different variations have really good ratings on EWG. This is the one I use the most. It's fragrance free, which is also really important because a lot of fragrances don't specify where they come from and are from chemicals. And you also, there's really no need to have a scented sunscreen. So I like this one a lot. 45 is even still a bit high. You really don't need to go any for higher than 35 because it hasn't been proven that any sunscreens higher than that are actually doing anything more. You need to reapply just as much and you're just paying for a higher number. It also comes in a spray. I personally try to avoid aerosol sprays as much as possible. I do have some things that have an aerosol spray, but if you want to use an aerosol spray because they're easier, then Alba Botanica does also offer an aerosol version. So I didn't buy this one, but it's the right brand. Did good. And for my face, I recently purchased the Coco Kind. I've been using it for a month. Their daily SPF and it's SPF 32. And this is a mineral sunscreen. It's the first mineral sunscreen that I actually enjoy for my face. I'm super oily and I don't really like thick mineral sunscreens. I've tried the Drunk Elephant and a lot of those other ones just leave a really bad white cast and then my makeup doesn't go on right. And this one I actually like wearing underneath my makeup and it has zinc oxide either chemical or mineral as long as they are non-toxic they are good for you and for the planet staying with the skin and toxins that can get easily absorbed 
especially when it's something that you're wearing all the time, makeup. So a lot of makeup has really nasty stuff, but thankfully a lot of brands are switching over to cleaner ingredients and are really promoting the lack of these nasty chemicals in their makeup. And it's also super easy to find non-toxic makeup nowadays with Sephora, Ulta, and Target having their own clean seal. And another reason why you should use non-toxic makeup is because it's going onto our the skin on our face, which is some of the most sensitive thin skin. Also with lipstick, it's going on to our lips where everything can easily get transferred into our mouth as well as eyes. So just a lot of places where it can be an irritant and really easily get absorbed into your body. The EU has banned nearly 1500 toxic ingredients from being in makeup that's for sale there. In Canada also has a list of over 600 ingredients that are banned for sale in makeup in Canada and the FDA here in the US only has 11 ingredients. With all these ingredients being able to be on our shelves, it's up to us to find makeup that is non-toxic and doesn't have anything that will harm us. So some of the biggest offenders for makeup are parabens like purple paraben and isobutyl paraben, fragrance which can mean absolutely anything, especially if it doesn't specify where it's derived from like an essential oil or a natural source, it's often chemicals. Oxytinate and oxybenzone again often used for sunscreens or to Put, be put in foundations to add a little sunscreen element to it. Dimethylamine or DEA, trixalan phthalates like diable phthalate, SLSs which are sodium lauryl sulfates, formaldehydes, polyethylene or PEGs like PEG10 laurate, and butylated hydroxysol or BHA. I don't know everything about all the specific ingredients but just to know that those are some of the really bad ones and also not chemicals but talc and mica are something that are often in makeup to give it a little sparkle or a little sheen and those have been shown to get into our pores and clog our pores and cause a lot of issues not just in your skin but with health as well so as long as you know the names even if you don't know their exact function just know to not look for that and again a lot of places are making it super easy by giving them a clean label seal so you just know to look for that instead of going through the ingredients list and trying to figure out what all of it means because even non-toxic makeup still has some big words that you are hard to specify what's clean and what isn't. Cleaner beauty brands that I've been really into are Cover FX. They are cruelty free, vegan, and clean, and they make a really, really good foundation. So if you've always loved your MAC because of the higher coverage, then I think you would really love Cover FX. It's what I have on right now. Also, Ilia is one of the cleanest brands out there, and they also do packaging returns so they can recycle the packaging. So big fan of Ilia and just all of the stuff that they're doing and how clean they are and how focused on good beneficial products for the skin are. Like even this one has niacinamide in it, which I absolutely love niacinamide for the skin. As well as Bare Minerals, again, super clean products, especially the powder products because they don't have talc and mica like many other powders do. Next up is deodorant. It's another item to watch out for since not only it goes onto your skin, but it goes onto your skin in an area that's really close to your lymph nodes, so it's being absorbed into your skin, into your bloodstream, right next to a super sensitive area. And many deodorants utilize aluminum in order to block the pores and be an antiperspirant. And aluminum, while studies are still kind of up in the air, has been shown to be correlated to a higher increased risk of cancer, especially breast cancer, considering where it's being applied, as well as some other estrogenic effects. Standard deodorants also use different chemicals to kill off bacteria in order to stop the odor, but by killing off the harmful bacteria, it's also killing off good bacteria, which is altering your skin's microbiome, which is super important because if it's killing off the good bacteria, then if you don't put on deodorant for a while, because you become a bit more reliant on that, then the good bacteria isn't there and you actually notice that you start to smell more if you're not using your deodorant as much as you were earlier. Chemicals to cut out in your deodorant besides aluminum, which is often listed as aluminum chlorohydrate, are paraffins, triclosan, phthalates, fragrance that don't specify where they came from, and propylene glycol. Thankfully, again, there are many clean deodorant brands out there. I used Kapari for a really long time because it's coconut oil, 
Corporate based and I just really, really enjoyed it. But I did recently switch to Corpus Naturals based on the scent descriptions online. I actually didn't know which one I would want. So I got the little mini set. So I'm kind of narrowed out which one I want to get the bigger one in. But I'm a big, big fan of these. And they're also baking soda free. So a lot of natural deodorants also do use baking soda in order to reduce odor but if you have more sensitive skin like I do you may have a slight reaction to it so if you try a natural deodorant and it has baking soda and you notice maybe a little pit rash going on try looking for ones that don't have baking soda such as corpus or kupari both of these are really really good and I'm a big fan of and with natural deodorant if you are switching over to natural from standard deodorant there might be a little period where you feel like it's not doing anything but once you get rid of all that gunk that's just been accumulating there, you'll feel so much better and you won't ever have to go back to the toxic stuff. Next up is oral care. So dental hygiene is super important, but if you're putting toxins straight into your mouth, that's not a great thing. So thankfully there are also a bunch of clean toothpastes out there. I really like using David's toothpaste because not only is it clean like many other ones but it also has super eco-friendly packaging it's all aluminum made in the US so I really really like David's but again there are so many more to choose from and when picking a clean toothpaste you don't necessarily need something that's fluoride free I know there's a lot of stuff out there saying fluoride's bad for you I'm not a fan of fluoride being put into our drinking water but I do think a little bit of fluoride in your toothpaste isn't necessarily a bad thing especially if you have children or you're prone to to getting cavities fluoride is shown to strengthen your teeth but if we are getting a ton of fluoride from a bunch of toothpaste and from the drinking water I do think maybe it's a bit too much but there are a few things that you should cut out of your toothpaste like artificial colors artificial flavors SLS or the sodium lauryl sulfite which is usually added to just make it foam up which is just a brain trick for you to think that your toothpaste is working but it's not essential and ineffective toothpaste and can actually lead to mouth ulcers triclosan and propane glycol and if you want to throw mouthwash in the mix after you brush your teeth I really like NYX so a lot of mouthwashes are have alcohol which again similar to the deodorant that was killing off the good and the bad bacteria the alcohol will kill off the good and the bad bacteria in your mouth so you may feel a fresher breath but it's killing off the good stuff and really messing with your bacterial microbiome nyx actually comes in little crystals that you put into the container so you reuse the container add some water and it's an all natural mouthwash that will make you feel clean and fresh without any of the toxins in your typical mouthwash. The last non-toxic swap to make, especially as all the bugs are coming out as the weather heats up, is bug spray. So a lot of bug sprays have DEET in order to repel the insects, but DEET has been found to cause skin blisters and irritation, headaches, shortness of breath, seizures, joint stiffness. Natural ways to keep bugs away are with natural scents that deter them like citronella and mugwort. And houseflies actually really dislike basil. So I've noticed that since having basil on my little herb garden in the patio, we don't get any houseflies and we get to eat out there without having any flies bothering us. If there's a lot of bugs, you're hanging outside though and you want to add a spray or something to keep them away, look for a bug spray that is DEET free. A lot of them just use different essential oils. So one that I like is Kinfield. So this, while non-toxic and clean, is still really, really strong in this scent to where I made the mistake of spraying it on me inside the other day. I just did two sprays and it was pretty intense. So definitely still spray it outside unless you want your entire space to smell like it, but it definitely keeps the bugs away and it's a nice non-toxic way to do so. And also I recently purchased the Bug Off Essential Oil from Patty Wax. I bought it with the idea of putting it in my Retrovi Move diffuser so that way I can move the diffuser with me if I'm outside anywhere and I want to keep the bugs away but it's actually pre-diluted so you can even just apply it directly in a few spots on your body again it's a stronger scent so don't rub it all over but just a few spots here and there especially on like your ankles and wherever bugs tend to want to attack you the most and it will keep them away with the cinchinella the lemongrass oil and other essential oils that just repel the bugs naturally and not directly beauty and body related but I did want to give a quick shout out to two other things 
things that you should definitely make non-toxic swaps in. So the first one is candles. I have an entire video on toxic candles and how to know whether or not your candle is toxic. And I put it to the test by lighting a bunch of different candles over the course of a few days with my Dyson air purifier and it really doesn't like paraffin wax because it is super toxic. So to stop buying all of your paraffin wax candles and if you do light one, then also having a window open or your air purifier going in order to absorb all those chemicals so you don't breathe them in because when the candle is burning, yes, it smells good, but you're also breathing all of that air in. So switching over to candles that are soy, coconut or beeswax based with natural fragrances from essential oils or natural sources instead of chemical fragrances is super important as well as your cleaning supplies. So again, you can check with the Think Dirty app for this to see what cleaning supplies are super good. The highest rating cleaning supplies is Branch Basics. So once I saw that, I bought Branch Basics and I tried it. So not only is it super clean, but it's eco-friendly. It does the job perfect. And I absolutely love using that over the toxic cleaning surprise that if I spray Windex on something, I feel like I just breathe it in. So if you are using toxic cleaning supplies, you really need to bleach something. Be sure you're wearing gloves, even a mask, have the windows open so the air flows and gets it out instead of all just sitting around. So if you do need to use toxic cleaning supplies, do so in a well-ventilated, safe way. But switching over to non-toxic cleaning supplies, especially for easier cleans and not deep scrubs, switching over to non-toxic products is the best. Well, I hope you learned something new about the ingredients and the products that you use every day and some non-toxic alternatives that you can switch to in order to better your health and your life. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below what your favorite non-toxic swaps are and what you want to see more of on my channel. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. I upload a new video every Wednesday. So until the next one, thanks for watching.